Hey, thanks for watching. This is going to just be a casual life update, chit chat, what's going on in my life, how my life has changed over the past year as far as life updates go. Uh, my little one is sleeping, so it's four o'clock on a Thursday and I have maybe, maybe 20 minutes to get this done and out. So this is what I got. So since having my child in August, I feel like my life has kind of fallen into a rhythm, which is good. Before having her, I could not imagine how this would work. And now that I'm sort of past that point, we've kind of jumped in. I feel like I've learned some things as far as life with a baby <laughs> in a 765 square foot Manhattan apartment goes. So I'm actually really happy with the way that life has settled out. And I wouldn't, thinking back on it a year ago, I wouldn't have thought that it would be this, I would say this simple to ease into it. Cost of living is what it is, but these are some things that I'm kind of doing and life happenings, life updates that have made it a little bit easier. So I, when we're at home and not traveling, I cook three to four times a week, which is, so whenever I'm home, I work, um, I drive to work remote um, two days a week. And then I, I just, I cook three to four times a week and that saves money. So I'm in that rhythm of meal planning, grocery shopping and cooking. Um, and that's sort of the number one thing I do to um, help sort of cut costs, keep us on covering our monthly budget or covering our monthly um, keeping costs low. So that's thing number one as far as the rhythm goes. And I'll start dinner around four o'clock and then we'll just have it ready to go. Um, and then kind of everyone can eat when they have a chance. So that's as far as that goes. That, that's sort of the number one thing, part of my routine. That's really helped. And I realized that I would be doing a lot of these things, um, cooking, laundry, cleaning, things like that, regardless of whether or not I had kids. And now that I, I'm married and I have kids, I feel like it's just an added bonus. I get to do this with people and, and for someone. I, I say for someone, because I'm doing it for myself, first and foremost. Um, the life update is now I get to do it with um, additional people for company. So that's that. And it's interesting as far as sort of cleaning goes, <laughs> I'm teaching the little one. And this is, I, gender roles are, I, I don't really pay attention to that. I would, anyone who lives in this household pulls their weight. So I've taught my little one how to unload the dishwasher um, basket and she will hand me uh, silverware. She's 11 months, gonna be um, a year at the end of the month and she'll hand me the silverware and we'll put away the silverware together. And she loves it. Like she'll hear me unloading the dishwasher and come like crawling over to help out. So that is something I am very happy about. Um, it's something that's again, very important to me is that um, family life feels collaborative and that we're all working toward the same goal. That's so important um, being on the same page, I'd say on the same page sounds very cliche, but that we're all working together and we're all on each other's team is really important to me. So I feel like pitching in is a big part of that. So I'm excited to allow her, invite her to participate in that at a very young age. So that's again on the day to day. I get up around seven um, because usually she gets up when I get up. If I'm up, she's up. And that's kind of frustrating because I would love to be able to get up early and have sort of an hour on un 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 uninterrupted time, but it unfortunately doesn't work like that. So at this point in time, it may change. It will change, I'm sure, further down the road. But right now I get up at seven and um, sort of get the day started with her. I mean, it's like nonstop and needs to be attended to. So I get her started, um, changed, dressed, ready for the day, get myself dressed, showered, ready for the day, and then I make her breakfast, feed her breakfast, I make myself, I actually don't, I've just started intermittent fasting, which is good because then I don't worry about myself eating, make myself coffee. Um, if I'm cooking something, I'll make something for my husband as well. So, and again, this is just when we're home because we travel usually about once a month, which lately it's been once, once a month. It's exhausting, but a lot of fun. And when, by travel, I mean sometimes we'll be in Delaware. Um, we may have more travel coming up, but that's just, that's not as, it's not as exciting or glamorous as it sounds. Sometimes it is, but not all the time. So that's my day. Then I start work at nine. I usually try to sign in early just to kind of see what's coming for the day. Um, I work, break for lunch, feed the child, put her down for a nap. She takes two naps, sometimes just one long one. She's just kind of on that cusp about going to two nap, uh, from two naps to one nap. 
and I work in between, I'll take meetings if I need to, um, a lot of my preparation happens at night. So I get dinner started at four, get her, dinner's usually ready by five, we'll eat, and then uh, bath time is at 6.30 or 7, any later, and um, she gets really cranky, so we start bath time early, and then we do the nighttime routine, and then getting her to sleep takes anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. And that's just me. That's That can be like a wind down time for me too. I can be on my phone as she's falling asleep. And again, all of this is happening in a one bedroom apartment with the bathroom attached to the bedroom. So that's kind of the wind down. And then right around 7.30 or 8, that is when if I have anything important to do for work, I will do that at night, which is rough because at the end of the day, my energy is kind of flagging. Um, there's just stuff that needs to get done and that will get done later, later at night. Plus anything I have to do for my own business or personal, that will happen at night. And I relish those times after the little ones in bed, I will take some time for myself um, and kind of gather. Sometimes it's listening to a podcast. Sometimes it's, uh, most of the time, it's listening to a podcast, like clean up the kitchen or fold, fold the laundry or something like that. Eat some snacks. <laughs> it's been a favorite lately. So, and again, I, I, as I mentioned, I just started intermittent fasting and that's something that has really worked well for me in order to feel my best. So I have been starting a fast around 10 p.m. and then breaking around 11.30 or noon the next day, which works out because I do enjoy eating and relaxing after my daughter has gone to sleep. So that is something that has happened for me lately what's going on. So that has been kind of my daily rhythm. And within that sort of rhythm is where I carve out the hours to work and to do what I want to do. I mean, I have, if I have an hour, two times a week, that's a lot, but that's kind of what it works out to do. And I'll get these like grand ideas like, oh, I can build this website and add all these articles and do all of these things and monetize. And I'm like, yeah, no, I had, I, I mean, I, I have these ideas and I'm like, I have to be realistic. What can I do in two hours a week, two free hours a week? I really, I like, that's the biggest thing is being realistic about my expectations. So as far as life update goes, being realistic is number one and being not over, I, I want to say the word over expecting, over, <laughs> over expecting what I can do in a year, and overestimating what I can do in a year, that's the word, and underestimating what, can, what we can do in three years. So that's kind of the next question um, for me that I'm asking is, will there be more kids? If there are, what would that look like? And all that is a day to day, leaving it up to a higher power to my higher power is how that comes again, just day to day. So that's where my life is right now. And that's kind of how it's going. Within that, I build time to calibrate and make sure that my, the financial actions that I make, the things that I'm buying, the moves that I'm making with my money are on target or are tracking with where I want to end up in the middle of this time. So as, as I'm walking through this day, do my day-to-day -day actions, will they put me on target to end up where I want to? It's like using that, that flight path metaphor. We watched the um, Idris Elba show Hijacked and the captain actually used the flight path to signal distress. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And I've, I've heard the analogy that pre 9-11 flights used to be off course 90% of the time. That wasn't unusual for them to be slightly off course. And now they're much more strict about that post 9-11. So... For me, I just think about, again, if I'm flying my flight from here <laughs> in debt, not a lot of savings to debt-free, huge savings, not having to rely on a paycheck. If I'm going from here to there, are the uh, small actions that I make, am I heading in that direction or am I heading away from that direction? So that's what I try to do, what I aim to do with my finances day to day. So there you go. That's sort of a life update on my day to day routine as well as my financial moves at the moment. So thank you so much if you've watched this far and let me know how you're doing in the comments. I love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching and I hope you'll keep watching.